Miss Settle here, and I'm flying over the Himalaya mountains in Asia. Some of the world's tallest mountains lie here, including Mount Everest, the highest mountain in the world. Standing at a staggering 29,000 feet above sea level. But how are these colossal pieces of rock forced thousands of feet into the air? We will find out this and more in our next unit called Forces in Earth's Crust. In this unit, we will answer many questions such as, how does stress change Earth's crust? How do faults form? And what is a fault? How does plate movement create new landforms? Think about it. Earth's crust is broken into many plates. But how do these massive, brittle plates, how are they able to move? Pause the video and jot down your answer. If you guessed convection currents in the mantle, you are correct. If not, I'm looking forward to hearing some of your answers. But the huge molten core contributes something else essential for life on Earth. A way of helping to regulate the planet's temperature. It's a remarkable system. Magma heated by the core rises towards the Earth's surface. As it spreads sideways, the Earth's crust is very slowly dragged apart. This moves the continents, creating the Earth's restless and ever-changing surface. So how does stress change Earth's crust? Well, first of all, stress is a force that acts on a rock to change its shape or volume. Stress adds energy to the rock and is stored in the rock until the rock changes shape or breaks. There's three types of stress. Tension, where two plates are pulled apart. Compression, where two plates are forced together. And shearing, where two plates slip past each other. How do faults form? When enough stress builds up in a rock, the rock breaks, creating a fault. So another name for a fault would just be a massive crack in the bedrock. Most faults occur along plate boundaries, where the crust is pushed and pulled until it breaks. There are three types of faults. A normal fault occurs where rock is pulled apart by tension. In a normal fault, the hanging wall, which is the block above the break, slides downwards. An example of a normal fault is San Luis Valley in Mexico. Where the rock was being pulled apart, it created the valley, which later filled in with the Rio Grande River. Here's an example of a normal fall um, and an upcrop of rock along the side of the highway. You can clearly see the foot wall, which is the block below the break, and the hanging wall, which is the rock above the break. In a normal fault, the hanging wall slips downward. 
Reverse faults form where compression pushes the rock together. In this case, the hanging wall moves upward. An example of a reverse fault are the Rocky Mountains in western United States. In these pictures, you can clearly see where the hanging wall was uplifted and the foot wall remains flat. Strike slip faults form when either side of the fault slips past each other. An example of this is the San Andreas Fault in California. Strike slip faults often cause earthquakes. How do plates movement create new landform? Over millions of years, the forces of plate movement can change a flat plane into anticlines and synclines, folded mountains, fault block mountains, and plateaus. Anticline and synclines are formed when rocks are compressed by tectonic plate forces. They can be as small as the side of a cliff or as large as an entire valley. Anticlines are the crest of the wave, while synclines are the dip. Here's an example of a small anticline and syncline on an outcrop of rock alongside a road. Folded mountains are formed when two plates collide. Examples of these on Earth are the Himalayas in Asia and the Alps in Europe. The Himalayas in Asia were formed when millions of years ago the Indian plate began to move towards the Eurasian plate. When the plates collided, the energy forced the rock up thousands of feet into the air. Now, obviously this did not happen instantly. This took millions of years and was a super slow process. And still today, the Indian plate continues to move towards the Eurasian plate, and the Himalayas are continuing to grow taller. Here's an example of another folded mountain in Europe, the Alps. Fault block mountains are formed a little differently. They're formed where two plates move away from each other. Tension forces create many normal faults. In this picture, we have two normal faults that have formed. As the hanging walls slip downward, the block in between now stands above the surrounding valleys. So this block of rock is not being pushed upward. The hanging walls on both sides are slipping downward. A fault block mountain looks something like this. Plateaus, on the other hand, are caused by forces in Earth's crust pushing up large flat blocks of rock. Here's a beautiful plateau found in South America.